right, good afternoon, everyone. It's good to be here today in Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, so thank you for everyone for coming today. So the title of this talk is slightly different from what's on the agenda. Um, so this is specifically looking around fundraising for Bitcoin companies. Uh, so just a bit of context. Uh, the purpose of this talk is to highlight the importance of fundraising, uh, enlighten you on the do's and the don'ts of fundraising, and also just to teach you the high-level process of fundraising. Uh, so a bit of background, who am I? Um, in case you don't know, I'm Leon Johnson. Uh, I work at Fedi. Uh, I'm the head of operations, effectively the COO, and I look after and oversee HR, uh, recruiting, finance, um, customer experience, fundraising, and investor relations. Uh, so I helped uh, Fedi in their fundraise. There's recently a Series A round, uh, which was 17 million. Uh, I also manage Fedi's financial portfolio, uh, which is worth currently over 20 million cash and investments. I've also helped other smaller Bitcoin startups in their fundraising efforts as well. Uh, and I also organize and run Advancing Bitcoin, uh, which is a Bitcoin developer conference in London, which runs every year. And we'll recently be celebrating our fifth year uh, in March. All right, so first of all, let's start with who should not be fundraising, because fundraising isn't for everyone. Uh, so if you are thinking, you know, you've got a cool idea, a project, for example, um, but perhaps you're not looking for rapid growth, then fundraising probably isn't for you. Those of you who don't like the idea of investors owning a part of your company and you prefer to bootstrap the project, uh, again, fundraising probably isn't for you. And people who maybe just aren't clear at this point in time where their project, project could go. So maybe it's, you know, a weekend project, and it's just a little hack. Fundraising probably isn't for you. Um, but who should be fundraising? So organizations that want to build a company and not simply a weekend project. Uh, and those of you who maybe you have a cool project, you're starting to get some traction, um, and you probably have competitors that are well-funded. And realistically, they'll probably eat you for lunch if you're not well capitalized. So to grow fast, you need to be steps ahead of them and you need capital. So now let's talk about why do companies fail to fundraise successfully? Because not everybody that tries to fundraise does so successfully. Um, this may be new to some of you, but um, there are many companies who try and fail at this. So first of all, they failed at positioning themselves in the market as a hot commodity. So there are 101 Bitcoin wallets out there. Um, if you really want to get people to invest in you, you have to show investors why you are a hot commodity. Adding one extra feature probably isn't going to do it. You really need to show why you are the next big thing. Um, also, companies fail to appeal to an investor's trigger points. So their head, which is often numbers, financial projections, and also their heart. So you need to give them a reason why they think you and your team can deliver this project. And you know, you're not just talking a good talk. Another reason why is simply, and some of you may not like this one, but your product just simply isn't compelling enough. You really, really, really need to make your product compelling. So when people see your product or they hear about your idea, they think just, wow, this is amazing. Another reason why people fail to fundraise successfully is that they do so too slowly. And one of the reasons that this occurs is because the economic environment can change. Investors' appetite can change. So once you realize you're gonna fundraise and you realize you know, people are liking what you're doing, you need to make it quick, sharp, and get it over and done with. 
Uh, another reason why I've seen some companies fail to fundraise successfully is that they fundraise at the wrong time. So you really need to take a, a look at the macroeconomic environment. Um, you know, are we in a recession? Are we approaching a recession? What do investors think? Are we coming out of a recession? And then the other one is bull versus bear market. So, you know, depending on your opinion, we're kind of going into a bull market right now. So your investor's appetite will increase, whereas if we're in a bear market, it'll be really difficult. And even if we're just coming out of a bear market, it'll be very difficult. Not impossible, but um, difficult. And just for a bit of context, uh, Feddy, when we raised recently, um, this was at the very kind of start of a bear market. So it's possible, but uh, you would like, I think you should definitely take that into consideration. All right, so what is the fundraising process? Uh, at a high level, I would say that there's three stages to it. Uh, the first is to strategize. Um, and this is where you kind of think through like, when should we raise? What's the process of finding our potential investors? How would we pitch? There are other things as well, plus more. Um, then there's also pitching and negotiation. So that's the second stage. So this is where you do things like you create a deck, you practice your pitching, you find out what resonates, plus more. Um, and then the last part is really about sealing the deal. So once you've kind of got your investors on board, you now need to think through, okay, what are the terms of the contract negotiations? Uh, we need to think through the due diligence, um, plus there are other stages to it. So those are the three high level stages to it. And we don't have enough time to really go through this in detail you know, each step, but what I will say is that I'll go through perhaps just one uh, of these steps here, the strategize, and kind of just demonstrate to you some of the things we need to think about. Okay, so the first, you know, when we think about strategizing, we need to think about when should we raise? Um, now obviously, if there's no money in the bank, you're probably thinking, well, I need to raise right now, but I would definitely think it through um, because when you approach an investor, you want to do so when you know you're hot. Uh, you want to do so when the market is hot. When there's a ideally a bear mark, a bull market, that would be the ideal time, and ideally when you know your investors have recently raised as well. Uh, you also need to have a process for finding the right investors. So. You know, if you're a Bitcoin company and you're going to an investor who looks at crypto, then they may not really understand your Bitcoin project or they may not have the same type of interest in Bitcoin um, that you do because they're more crypto or Web3. Uh, and there are other investors who simply, you know, they look at Bitcoin and they're like, well, that's not our thing. Maybe they focus on AI. Maybe they focus on um, B2B um, SaaS, for example. You also need to think through your process for pitching. That is absolutely key. The pitch will potentially make you or break you. Uh, so you need to think through, you know, where will that be? How will you do it? How will you handle follow-up questions? Will it be just yourself? Will it be your business partner? Um, so yeah, you really need to have a process for doing that. You also need to be realistic about the amount you can raise. So, you know, if you go in and you try to raise say 20 million and then you end up struggling to raise 10, 10 is still amazing, but it signals to the market that for, wh for whatever reason, uh, you're struggling to get traction, which is you know, a bad look. Uh, you also need to be determined. So uh, I can just speak from experience, you know, at Feddy when we raised uh, 17 million in our series A, it is grueling, it is grueling work. So you really need to be determined, you need to go hard, you need to be swift, um, it's taxing. Okay, so here are some of the don'ts of fundraising. Um, so I would say definitely don't attempt to raise capital for more than a duration of six months. Um, it just looks bad to potential investors. 
uh, that you're struggling to do the raise and it's also you know it has a an impact on you and the team as well and by impact I'm talking about stress and it also kind of diverts your attention from building the product working on the product talking to your customers uh, some of the other don'ts so don't focus heavily on tech uh, at the expense of your go-to-market strategy you know, tech is important, and many of us that are work here in the Bitcoin space and other industries as well, like AI, we're very techy. But ultimately, your go-to-market strategy um, is, you know, equally important. So really, pay attention to that. So how do you distribute this to your customers? How will it go viral? You really need to give a lot of thought to that. Um, another don't is to uh, don't attempt to raise too much. Uh, again, as I mentioned before, if you struggle to raise, this is a bad signal to the market and future investors. Uh, another one is don't try to figure it out yourself as you go along. Um, you definitely want to speak to people that have done it before and really kind of get some expertise to help you with this. All right, so who in the audience potentially needs funding in the future? So if there's anyone in this room that potentially is thinking of creating their own startup or uh, has a product, are there any show of hands here? Is there anyone that is thinking of it or has thought of kind of creating their own product? Okay, awesome, okay, awesome. All right, good, good to hear, good, okay, it's good. Um, so, you know, take it back a year ago, uh, working at Feddy, um, yeah, I was, I was like completely blind, but yeah, I was in a similar situation to you, to you guys really trying to figure it out um, myself, along with, you know, working with my CEO, um, CEO Fetty, OB. Uh, so what I'm gonna say is, yeah, if you are working on your projects and you're thinking of fundraising in the future, uh, please take down my contact details. Happy to talk with you guys, happy to help in any way I can, uh, and, you know, share any kind of lessons learned that I've come across over the last year. Um, so yeah, you can find me on Twitter, or X, I should say now. Um, so that's Leon Johnson, uh, but you can also email me. Uh, so it's Leon at advancingbitcoin.com. Uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, and then I'm here today, well, not tomorrow, because I thought this talk would be yesterday. Uh, <laughs> it got moved. Uh, so feel free to reach out to me in person or by email. Uh, happy to help. And yeah, happy to help in any way I can. All right, and that is it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, any questions? Please. Thank you very much for an insightful talk. Um, I've got a question with regards to what would be your advice to say somebody intending to fundraise for something that is a little bit more like open source or, I mean, if you think of some Bitcoin projects where you wanted to somewhat maintain that self-sovereignty and it's more open source, but then at the same time, you have to deal with VCs who also want equity control and so on and so forth. So how do you strike that balance between keeping the project somewhat open source and self-sovereign, but also getting some much needed capital infusion in? Thank you. Yeah, I think that is a, um, a dilemma that quite a few Bitcoin projects specifically um, have come across. And uh, this is a kind of a criticism I've heard of some companies in the Bitcoin space that, you know, if you take capital from a VC, then you may lose the ethos of, you know, open source, uh, decentralized technologies, etc. cetera. Um, because, you know, within our industry, that is a big deal. Uh, you know, privacy, open source, decentralization. What I will say to you is if you find Bitcoin specific VCs, there are some who will understand that dilemma and they will be more than willing to invest probably at a lower amount and you know, they'll have less equity. 
um, because they see your project as, as important and they understand the need for you know, open protocols, open um, projects, projects that may not return, you know, some great significant returns to them, but they understand the significance of this within the industry. Uh, there are VC firms, for example, that donate to, you know, Bitcoin Core developers um, and other open source Bitcoin projects that probably won't give them any money directly in return, but they understand why this is significant for the industry. So what I would say to you is, you know, you need to kind of demonstrate to them why your project is important for the open source community. Um, and if there isn't a commercial element, um, I think that's absolutely fine. You know, there are VCs out there who are, you know, they fully understand this. There aren't many, but they are there. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to kind of share some names with you afterwards if you want to do that. Cool. All right, any other questions? No? Any, anyone feeling a bit shy? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, like I said, I'm here uh, for today. So yeah, feel free if you have any questions. And thanks again.